I suppose um, gaming has maybe been hyped as like one of the big use cases. So we'll perhaps cover that first. And when I think of like spatial computing games, I'm thinking fancier Pokemon Go. Uh, but this is probably just scratching the surface. So can you tell me like what would spatial computing bring to gaming? Well, a lot. Okay, so basically uh, the gaming that it has existed up until now has used a lot of the time spatial computing because it uses computer vision. And you need computer vision to do spatial computing. So computer vision allows um, technology to be able to see in front of it and be able to gauge what's what's in front of it, the environment. And it, if you're moving, where are you moving and that kind of thing, location. Um, so Niantic has always used uh, spatial computing. Um, there are other games that, let's say, met, meta that use less spatial computing. So it's a matter of degree um, and that's why it's really interesting that this term is now becoming, um, uh, hopefully, I think it's going to be broadly used. But in actuality, the technology has always been there. So it's nothing really new in terms of gaming. Um, the new thing that might blow everything apart is generative AI, which allows people to create their own images and videos. And if you pair that along with spatial computing and also make a game with that, that really makes it fantastic. Yeah, so I think um, spatial, compu- sorry, uh, computer vision was sort of, it was a kind of okay, maybe like uh, mid 2010s, and now it's getting to the point where you can reliably do object detection on an awful lot of things. That's so, it, yeah. Yeah, it just seemed like that technology is maturing. Yeah, Richie, I think it's about creating that spatial awareness that Irina is mentioning. Um, and, you know, and, and like AI now understanding the physics of the space and the physical world. So these digital elements have, um, you know, have um, spatial awareness. But right? I think that that's that's kind of where it starts to become really interesting. And from a gaming perspective, if you look at everything that's happening in that space, for example, very recently, Resolution Games launched Demeo, which is kind of really going to be a, a big title coming to the Apple Vision Pro. So I'm hoping to see kind of how more people start to game in the device. Uh, and granted, it's a device that not that many people have, but, you know, as a proud owner of one, uh, I'm looking forward to doing some more gaming with it. And Demeo is one of those titles that is kind of the first to arrive that is truly kind of in the in the kind of spatial computing gaming space. Okay, so it sounds like maybe the gaming industry has a bit of work to do just to figure out, well, what sort of games do you need to make in this medium? Yeah, and also um, Marvel, for example, Disney and Marvel on May 30th, um, are going to be launching or will have launched depending on when this airs um, kind of new immersive experiences and new storytelling formats for their Marvel universe. So I think we're going to continue to see not only gaming, but a big Hollywood IP embrace spatial computing very early on, but changing, I think the way people engage that, that human computer interaction in the sense that, you know, we've been really passive recipients or passive users of technology in some ways, us adapting to technology um, I think technology is going to start adapting to the physical world. So that's where these new content formats, whether it's the Mayo as a game in spatial computing or what Marvel is going to bring us, uh, is going to start to make us a little bit more uh, of an active part of what is happening in these stories. That's really interesting, the Marvel angle. So does this mean we're going to expect like new um, forms of like TV shows and other uh, entertainment media? I think so. I think it's giving way to spatial video. Um throws 3 centric depth content, like beyond 3D, beyond just 3D TV, right? Like I, I want people to understand we're not talking about like the old type of 3D TV where you wear these cookie glasses. Um, it's more, you know, once once this virtual content is spatially aware, you can start to engage with it in different ways because it's going to understand your the physical world around you. Um, so I definitely think we're going to see new content type spatial video. Um, definitely from everything I'm hearing, people are getting more and more interested in spatial video, which is video that has depth. So right now with like my iPhone 15 Pro Max, I can shoot spatial video, um, video that has depth, the video that I can see in 3D that feels a lot more, more volumetric. It feels more like off, like what I live in, in a daily basis. Um, so I can shoot it with my phone, but then I can watch it back in my Vision Pro. Um, so you're going to start to think, I, I, you know, sports, entertainment, all these sorts of new formats, uh, new, new uh, all the sort of these new industries embrace these new formats to start to experiment with my, what might come next. Um, but I mean, I, I don't know if you want to add something regarding kind of like the depth element of, of of video and what's coming. Well, I mean, Apple has really played up the entertainment angle. And I mean, it makes a lot of sense. They've got, uh, you know, Apple TV Plus, you know, to be able to put on their own 
um, their own shows. So I'm looking forward to see what they produce. And I know it's going to be quite a bit. I mean, right now they do have some sports on there. They have soccer, you know, and, and, and basketball and stuff like that. So they really wanted to play up the sports angle in 3D. Um, and they tried to get the NFL to join, but they weren't able to do the contract, unfortunately. So, yeah, I just want to add that um, it's there. It's it's kind of there are new forms that people might think would be needed for spatial computing. But I think that the Apple Vision Pro is just pushing forward in better quality what has come before. 